to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The apostle John said, Then I saw that holy city coming down out of heaven from God, and his tabernacle was among men. Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. Welcome today to our study of I'm going to view that holy city. That holy city that is spoken of in Revelation 21 ought to be something that every Christian one day wants to be a part of. We're so glad that you've joined us today for our broadcast about that heavenly or holy city. And we hope today to encourage each one of us to make sure we're walking the straight and narrow so that one day heaven can be our home. If you don't have your Bible, we want you to take just a minute and locate your Bible. Pause whatever you're doing. Take just a minute to locate your Bible as we want to look to the Word of God in our study of that holy city today. You see, this mentality, this idea it needs to be on every Christian's heart. But sometimes things get in the way and we hope to correct some of that today and maybe encourage us to go in the direction of heaven. Today's lesson, of course, is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Church of Christ in your area. The Lord's Church would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. You'll find Christians there who want nothing more than for people to know God and His will and to go to heaven. They're people who love God, love other people, and love the Scriptures immensely. And friend, we want to encourage you to visit them in your area. If you'd like to have a Bible study, they'd be more than happy to sit down with you. Uh, if you've got a Bible question, like to know more about the church or worship or whatever it may be, you'll find people there who would sit down and in love and in truth open God's Word with you. We also want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd be happy to help you as you desire to know more about God and His Word as well please check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can locate or access all our Bible study materials. We have lessons on a multiplicity of topics, biblically speaking, spiritually speaking. We have lessons on every book of the Old Testament and every book of the New Testament, all available in audio or video form. If you'd like to have a copy of any of that or our written material, Check it out on our website, again, thegospelofchrist.com. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, you can fill out a media request form. We can send that to you in a digital download. Or if you need a DVD, audio, or video lesson, we can make that available as well. And don't forget to check out the Gospel of Christ app available in the respective play stores there. You can download that from the App Store and it's a great way in our fast-paced world to keep up with the Word of God and what we're doing here as well. And so we're so glad that you joined us. Hope you got your Bible and have opened it to Revelation chapter 21. Let's read Revelation 21 verses 1 through 4 together. The Bible says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Friend, this picture of that heavenly city, that beautiful eternal home, it's what spurs us on. It's what motivates 
Christians to keep walking in the light every day. As we think today about this heavenly city, we want to talk about some things that are necessary to make sure that I view that holy city. What must I do to make sure that heaven is my eternal home? Well, friend, first and foremost, I've got to live for Jesus Christ 100% to make sure that I view that heavenly city. Let me show you from the mouth of Jesus. Would you open your New Testament to Luke chapter 9? And I want you to look with me at what Jesus said in verse number 23 about our, our commitment to Him. Luke chapter 9, notice what the Bible says in verse 23. Then Jesus said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Here we find the requirement to view that heavenly city is I've got to make a commitment 100% to the Lord. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He wants us to live a life of faithfulness. We Christians are to walk in newness of life every day. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. We are to first give ourselves to the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 5. And like the Apostle Paul, we need to have the mentality. I've been crucified with Christ. I'm no longer living for me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Paul said, I beg you, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Are we living every day 100% for Jesus? so that one day we can view that holy city. Now, friend, don't misunderstand me. Am I saying that I'm perfect or that anybody else is? Not at all. Every one of us is fighting the good fight every day. We're struggling uh, to run the race and do our best. I'm not saying I'm perfect, not saying you're perfect, but we're trying every day to walk in the light. We're trying to do our best to please God and make sure that we live for Him to the best of our ability. Secondly, to make sure we view that holy city. Friend, could we say today, stay busy? In my life and yours, the times probably when we have opportunity to get caught up in things we don't need to is when we're bored. You ever get bored? and find yourself doing things you really ought not to be doing? You ever get bored and find your mind going places it really ought not to go? Stay busy in the kingdom so that you can view that holy city. Let, let me share the verse with you. Look in your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I want to invite you to look in verse number 58. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Paul says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. When you think about the idea of staying busy in the kingdom and the need to always be focused and keep our mind on something, friend, that's going to do so much good keeping the problems out of our life that often exist. We mentioned it to you earlier, but I want you to hear what the proverb writer said in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. He gave us a great gem of advice on the power of staying busy. Listen to Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Where do the problems begin that sometimes cause problems? Viewing that holy city in the mind. All right, watch this now. Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. If I stay busy, working in the kingdom and doing what God wants me to do, my mind isn't going to have time to run to a lot of other places that maybe it shouldn't go. What else is required of me? To view that holy city? My friend, I need to make sure that I get a glimpse of it now by going to the assembly to worship God at every opportunity. Listen to Hebrews chapter 10 about the importance of Christians assembling and drawing close to God. And I want you to notice what the Bible says 
in verse 24 and 25. The writer here mentions how important it is for us to be with God. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more, as you see the day approaching. Gathering with Christians at the assembly, just a small glimpse of how beautiful that city is going to be and an opportunity to come into the presence of God in the here and now. And friend, we ought to feel like David felt. I was glad. It is not a drudgery. I'm not being forced. I'm not doing it because I'm going to go to hell. If I, that's not the idea. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? Because it's an opportunity to praise my God. John 4 verse 24, God is a spirit and those who worship Him must Worship in spirit and truth. David said, Oh, come, let us bow down. Let us worship before the Lord our Maker. It is an opportunity to praise our Creator, the Son of God and God Himself who gave His life on the cross for us. And so part of the requirement is to make sure we assemble with the saints. What a great glimpse of heaven that's going to be. What else is required of me to make sure I view that heavenly city? Friend, I have got to continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of God's divine Word. Would you open your Bible to the Sermon on the Mount? I want you to look at what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 about the importance of spiritual growth. Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The more I bring the Word of God into my heart and my life, the more I'm going to keep sin at bay. Listen to Psalm 119, verses 10 through 12. Your Word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20, verse 9, he said, I said I'm not going to speak in His name anymore. I'm not, I'm not talking about God anymore, he said. But His Word was in my heart. Like a burning fire shut up in my bones, I was weary of holding it back. And I could not. The Word of God just kind of came forth in Jeremiah's life. And thus Christians need to seek the law of the Lord to teach it and to do its statutes just like Ezra did in Ezra chapter 7 verse 10. And friend, with that, there's a great blessing as well. 1 John 5 13, John said, These things I write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. What good is there in studying and growing? Friend, it builds my confidence and my faith, and I can know that I'm trying to do my best to serve God and my confidence in His Word and the hope He gives. It's reassured every time I open the Bible. This is why Paul would say to the elders in Ephesus in Acts 20 verse 32, And so now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the Word of His grace, watch this, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Number four, to make sure I view that holy city, that heavenly city, I've got to trust God completely. Listen to what Jesus said. Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus said, And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. The, God is never going to leave us if we'll just learn to trust Him. When I think about trust, there's a passage that comes to mind uh, related to that. Open your Bible to Hebrews chapter 13, and I want you to notice what the Scripture says in Hebrews 13. Look in verses 5 following. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have, for God Himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Like the proverb writer in Proverbs 3 verse 5, we can say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways. He will direct your paths. Let God do the work. Trust in Him. Put your faith in Him. Lean on Him and He'll help us in every way. And then as Christians, to make sure we view that holy city, 
We want to continue to spread the good news about it. Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Baptizing all, go and teaching all nations. Matthew 28, 18, Mark 16, verse number 15. I, I love the attitude of first century Christians. These Christians in Acts chapter 5, they were told not to speak in the name of Jesus anymore, not to say anything about Him. And they defied that by obeying God. Daily in the temple and from house to house, they cease not teaching and preaching Jesus as the Son of God. Why did they do that? Why face persecution? Why disobey the civil authorities? Why go to great lengths like that? Because they wanted to view that holy city and they wanted others to as well. 1 Peter 2.9 says, We proclaim the praises of Him who called us out of darkness into His glorious light. What a glorious place it is to be a Christian. Tell others about that. Now, as we think about some requirements, let's also consider some, if we might use this terminology, some roadblocks that sometimes can get in the way of viewing that holy city if we're not careful. What's the first roadblock? The first roadblock is temptation. If we're not careful, our own temptation can block the way to that holy city. You see, the wages of sin it's death. And there have been many people who at one time were on the right path. Balaam at one time said, whatever my God says to me, that I'll say. And yet later, he turned on that. Judas, has, Judas was a great uh, disciple of the Lord at one time, but he's the one who eventually turned his back on Jesus. Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Hymenaeus and Alexander, Simon the sorcerer, and, and the list goes on and on. What are we trying to say? Friend, don't let temptation block the way of you viewing that holy city. The way of the transgressor is hard. Proverbs 13, verse 15. The devil's going to do everything he can to make it appealing, to make you want to give in to it, to make it look so enjoyable. But realize it's the hardest way you could ever live. Your life, it's not about viewing, it's not about giving in to temptation, it's about letting yourself be in the presence of God and live with Him forever. Another roadblock. Worldliness can also block the roadway to faithfulness. I want you to open your Bible to 1 John chapter 2 and I want you to see what John said about worldliness. 1 John chapter 2, would you look beginning in verse number 15. The Bible says, do not love the world or the things in the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Can you think of anybody in the Bible that let worldliness block their view of the holy city? Let me give you a couple examples. What about Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5? They lied to God. They both died right there because of that. What a sad day it was. What about Solomon? Had everything you could imagine, all the wealth, all the riches, and yet his heart followed after his wives and not God. What about Lot's wife? You remember Luke 17, 32? Remember Lot's wife? What happened with her? Just had to have that one glance back. Just one more look at it. She turned into a pillar of salt. Friend, let's realize you cannot love God. You cannot love God and worldly riches. You cannot have it both ways. We've got to make a commitment to putting God and His people above all else. And then what else sometimes blocks the view of that holy city? If we're not careful, Apathy, the I don't care, it doesn't matter, it's not worth it anyway attitude. Friend, that can get in the way of viewing the holy city. Let me give you an example. Revelation 3, verses 14 and 15, Jesus said of the church there that you are neither cold nor hot. He said, I wished you were cold, I wished you were hot, but you're luke lukewarm. Jesus said, I want to vomit you out of my mouth. What's, what's Jesus saying there? These people weren't on fire. 
They weren't useful. They were apathetic, and it made the Lord sick to his stomach. Don't, don't get an apathetic view. Don't, don't take the I don't care, it doesn't matter, it won't do any good anyway attitude. Keep fighting the fight. Keep running the race and one day it truly will be worth it. All right then, let's give some final motivations that I hope will be incentives to help us make it to that beautiful place. What incentives are there to make sure I view that holy city? Friend, the beauty, the splendor and the beauty and the wonder of that holy city is almost more than our mind can imagine. Turn back to the passage, Revelation chapter 21, and let me illustrate it this way. Open to Revelation 21, and I want you to see just how wonderful and beautiful this place is going to be. The Bible says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from heaven say, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be His people. God Himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Think about the things that jump out about that city. There's no night there. Revelation 22 tells us. No need for the light, for the Lamb is its light. Same passage tells us. God is there. All the, the problems that we face aren't there. It's a place of rest. Hebrews 4 verse 9, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Friend, it's going to be far more beautiful, wonderful, and amazing than we could ever imagine. But then there's this incentive. There are things in this city that are absent, that we don't have, that are exist in every city no matter how wonderful it is today. Let me mention some of those. In this city, there's no more death. Revelation 14, 13, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Death has been defeated. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 55. We are now in the place of eternal life. Matthew 25, verse 46. What else? No more death, no more sorrow. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. We do not sorrow as others have hope in the here and now, but on the other side. You'll never get the call in the middle of the night. Somebody's passed away. You'll never have to attend a funeral. There's no more crying. The, one of the, the sadness, the heartache, the wailing and crying won't exist. What else is absent in this city that makes it wonderful? No more pain. You see, Paul knew about that. He had a thorn in the flesh, according to 2 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 9. Paul faced difficulties. He was beaten on various occasions, uh, had stripes laid on his back. Paul knew what pain was. And yet, as we hear here, no more pain. You'll never wake up and hurt again. You'll never face the problem, sickness, death, disease, whatever it may be. That doesn't exist on the other side. What else motivates us to view that holy city? Who's going to be there? The inhabitants, the population of that city makes me want to go there. Who's there? God is there. 1 John 4, 8, God is love. and He's the one who's the, the head of that city. Jesus is there. The one who's sitting at the right hand of God, the one who died and did more for humanity than anyone could ever imagine. He's on the right hand of the throne of God. Saints of old are there. Loved ones who've gone on before us in Christ are there. 2 Samuel 12 verse 23, the Bible says, David speaking about his young son who passed away, says, he cannot come to me. I must go to Him. He's there. That, that's one of the things we know about that great place is loved ones, saints of old, people whom we have lost in the Lord. They're there also. And then, my friend, the incentive to go to that heavenly city is the duration of it. How long will we be in that place? Matthew 25, 46, The righteous will go away into eternal life. Just like hell is going to last forever, heaven is going to last forever as well. There'll be no end 
of that wonderful place that we know of as that heavenly city. And so we bring things to a climax as we think about viewing that heavenly city today by asking you, by considering ourselves, are we ready to go to that city? Are you a citizen of God's kingdom? Have you obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Do you recognize and believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? Nobody can come to the Father except by Him. John 14, 6. Do we understand that He's the Savior of the world? Matthew 1, 19 through 21. And that He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through Him. Hebrews 7, 25. Are you willing to make a 180 in your life? To turn from sin to God? Would you change your way of acting? Change your way of thinking and live a life to the best of your ability to serve God, also known as repentance? Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Would you do what the Ethiopian eunuch did? Would you confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Savior of the world? Acts 8, verse 37 through 39. And friend, to have every sin washed away, to have your name put on, put on heaven's registrar of that heavenly city, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins? Here's what Peter said. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 20 and 21, Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. When Ananias came to Saul of Tarsus, here's what he said, Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. God will add you to His church, His kingdom. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, And if we live faithful unto death, continue to walk in the light, try our best to live for the Lord every day, one day you will be admitted into that heavenly city and you'll hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. We're glad you joined us today and hope you'll join us next time as we study more from the Word of God. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.